Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. A warm welcome this morning as we gather. Know that we have fellowship after worship this morning downstairs. All are welcome to come downstairs as we gather. Uh, the Monday and Wednesday Bible studies continue with the book uh, A.S. for Alabaster. So I think we have a couple copies still in the office if you need one. Uh, I think tomorrow we're doing bag fluffing, right? No. It's not. Is that not till the fourth Monday of October. It was last Monday. We have five Sundays here in September. So, oopsie. Um, next Saturday, Katie's Cup is having a um, cookout, a pork chop fundraiser, as a part of Cars and Coffee. So you're welcome to come down and participate in that on uh, this weekend. Also, then this weekend, we are doing uh, the Lutheran World Relief Truck. And uh, Janice Forrest, our student deaconess, will be leading it because uh, somebody is being induced on Wednesday. Yay! <laughs> Blessings, Nadi, as you journey together in this new era as well. So intern Rachel will have a month of uh, maternity leave uh, after the arrival of their child, so keep them in your prayers 
as they begin this new journey. Uh, and we offer our prayers of uh, joy and excitement as they enjoy some quiet time uh, with their, their new one. So Miss Janice is going to be leading that. So if you'd like to come out on Saturday or Sunday to help load the truck, uh, you're welcome to do that. Or on Sunday from noon uh, to 3. Please, please. Uh, Miss Janice is working with uh, Farmers Rising, uh, Ted Snowden, to do a canning de demonstration. So you can do this. <laughs> Don't flip your lid. Don't worry, you won't be in hot water if you did it. Wow, are we in a pickle? No. So you're welcome on October 11th, uh, 1230 to 2. Uh, you can email Ted or call the office and let us know you're interested in doing that. Uh, in the next few weeks, uh, we have other activities as well. Next, uh, on October 13th, there is Hispanic Heritage Sunday. We will have uh, LULAC join us for a forum after the service. Uh, and so you're welcome to join us for that day. And then on the 20th, I'll be leading a forum on Christian nationalism and uh, church and state conversations. Uh, and then uh, on Reformation Sunday, Lutheran 101, we'll have a conversation about the principles of being a Lutheran Christian. So join us for that forum as well. And then the next Sunday, we don't have a slide for this, but it is All Saints Day, the first Sunday in November. And so if you want to start emailing JoLynn, our office manager, names of people you'd like to be offered up in prayers uh, of the saints who have gone on before us, please do so if you'd like to do that. Uh, and then on uh, Reformation Day also, there is a civil rights trip recap for those who went on the trip. And then first Friday in November, Rockford Air Lutheran Ministries is continuing the trivia night, so please consider joining us for that event over at Our Savior's Lutheran Church if you're able to do so. As we gather now at the font, As we gather now at the font, I invite you to stand as we begin our time together. Last Sunday, I sat in the back pew right behind uh, Jerry Swan and uh, offered up prayers for Don Carlson's family uh, and Don, and uh, went to see Don last Sunday after church, and I asked him if he knew who I was. It was just me and the nurse, and he goes, yeah, I do. And I go, who am I? And he goes, you're Pastor Peterson. <laughs> and I said, come on, Don. And he goes, I know, Pastor Mike. <laughs> Don passed away Wednesday morning, or Tuesday morning, and his service will be Wednesday uh, here at Zion at um, 11 o'clock. So please keep him and uh, his family in your prayers as we gather this next week. And remember a, a man who's done. As he would say to us every day, every Sunday after worship, he would say, another job well done. So we gather at the font and hear those words for us, that at the end we hear the Lord say to us, well done, good and faithful servants, enter into the kingdom, into the reign of your Holy One. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Let us confess our sin and come to God for healing. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have honored you with our lips, but have harmed our neighbors with our tongues. The cravings at war within us cause us conflicts and disputes. And on our desire to be first, we make distinctions among ourselves. We place the needs of the poor and the suffering last. In your great mercy, forgive us our sins. Draw near to us with grace in time of need and turn us to follow in the way of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. God promises to forgive our iniquity and to remember our sin no more. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, the source of eternal healing, your sins are forgiven. The King of glory comes, the nation rejoices. Shall we call him? He is Emmanuel, the promised of 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. pray. Gracious God, your son gave his life that we may, that we might come to peace with you. Give us a share of your spirit. And in all we do empowers us to bear the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Good morning. Good morning. The first reading is from the book of Numbers, the 11th chapter. The rabble among them had a strong craving, and the Israelites also wept again and said, If only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, all at the entrances of their tents. Then the Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated your servant so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight, that you lay the burden of all these people on me? Did I conceive all these people? Did I give birth to them that you should say to me, carry them from your bosom as a nurse carries a suckling child to the land that you promised on the oath to their ancestors? Where am I to get meat to give to all these people? For they come weeping to me and say, give us meat to eat. I 
I am not able to carry all these people alone, for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you are going to treat me, put me to death at once. If I have found favor in your sight, and do not let me see my misery. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of the meeting and have them take their place there with you. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered seventy elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in a cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied, but they did not do it again. Two men remained in the camp, one named Eldad and the other named Medad, and the spirit rested on them. They were among those registered, but had not gone out to the tent, and so they prophesied in the camp. And a young man ran and told Moses, Eldad and Medad are prophesying in the camp. And Joshua, son of Nun, the assistant of Moses, one of his chosen men, said, My Lord Moses, stop them. But Moses said to him, Are you jealous for my sake? Would that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put his spirit on them. The word of the Lord. Thanks. Please read Psalm 19 responsively with me. The teaching of the Lord is perfect and revives the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure and gives wisdom to the simple. The statutes of the Lord are just and rejoice the heart. The commandment of the Lord is clear and gives light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean and endures forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired are they than gold, more than much fine gold, sweeter far than honey, than honey in the comb. By them also is your servant enlightened. And in keeping them there is great reward. Who can detect one's own offenses? Cleanse me from my secret faults. Above all, keep your servant from from presumptuous sins. Let them not get dominion over me. Then shall I be whole and sound and innocent of a great offense. But the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart Be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. The second reading is from the seventh chapter of Esther and also the ninth. King Ahasuerus and Haman went in to feast with Queen Esther. On the second day, as they were drinking wine, the king again said to Esther, What is your petition, Queen Esther? It shall be granted you. And what is your request? Even to the half of my kingdom, it shall be fulfilled. The Queen Esther answered, If I have won your favor, O king, and if it pleases the king, let my life be given me. That is my petition. And the lives of my people, that is my request. For we have been sold, I and my people, to be destroyed to be killed and to be annihilated. If we had been sold merely as slaves, men and women, I would have held my peace, but no enemy can compensate this damage to the king. Then King Ahasuerus said to Queen Esther, who is he and where is he? Who has presumed to do this? Esther said, a foe, an enemy, this wicked Haman. Then Haman was terrified before the king and the queen. Then Harbona, one of the eunuchs in attendance to the king, said, Look, the very gallows that Haman has prepared for Mordecai, whose words saved the king, stands at Haman's house, 50 cubits high. And the king said, Hang him on that. 
So they hanged Haman on the gallows that he had prepared for Mordecai. Then the anger of the king abated. Mordecai recorded these things and sent letters to all the Jews who were in all the provinces of King Erasuerus's, both near and far, enjoining them that they should keep the 14th day of the month Adar, and also the 15th day of the same month year by year, as days on which the Jews gained relief from their enemies, and as the month that had been turned for them from sorrow into gladness, and from mourning into a holiday, that they should make them days of feasting and gladness, days for sending gifts of food to one another and presents to the poor. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to Mark, the ninth chapter. Jesus said, or John said to him, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. But Jesus said, Do not stop him, for no one who does a deed of power in my name will be able soon afterwards to speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly, I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink because you bear the name of Christ will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of the little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great milestone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, tear it out. It is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell, where their worm never dies and the fire is never quenched. For everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt has lost its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves, and be at peace with one another. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Grace and peace to you from God and from the Holy Spirit who calls us into community to have a dialogue. So today, we're going to have a sermon dialogue as we gather. We gather and celebrate Jody and Jim's dialogue of nine years, which I think is going pretty good. We gather this day because... Amen! Yay! 
Jim, you listen very well, I'm sure. That's the work of the Spirit. We gather because God does call us and to community, sets us free in the waters, calls us to share the good news, and this dialogue means we know we have to continue to listen and be aware of who God sends to us to continue the ministry that we cannot bear on our own. So today I want to just thank our wonderful student pastor now, uh, Rachel, who will begin a new journey and a dialogue she's having uh, with a new little one. And we pray God's spirit upon you and thank you for the entering into this dialogue uh, 14 months ago. It's been a very good uh, journey and uh, it continues to teach me every intern about listening and being a part of the ministry where we share together the ministry. And also, I want to thank that the Holy Spirit that has sent us for Deaconess student Janice Forrest, who is stepping up more and more in her leadership role in the Holy Spirit's calling to serve in worship leadership here at Zion as well. Uh, because this journey is too difficult to do on our own. Um, and today we hear Moses knowing what that's all like. Moses really started his ministry all by himself as a shepherd, hanging out by himself, mostly just talking to himself. So if you've ever done that, you're in good company. Um, and then you know that Moses was called by God through the burning bush to liberate God's people, which he, of course, then had a dialogue with, um, with the Pharaoh, which didn't always go well. But then eventually the liberation. Now they're out in the wilderness, and it's sort of like the tomato season that never ends. What do you do with all these tomatoes? You just keep making different things. I baked and boiled tomatoes yesterday to see which flavor the tomatoes would taste better. And we like the baked tomatoes that make tomato soup more than the of, on the, uh, on the um, uh, stove top. It was a different flavor, baking the tomatoes, breaking down the tomato before using that emulsifier and uh, pe peeling the skins off first. They've been eating manna, and uh, they've had baked manna, fried manna, uh, manna kebabs, manna cotti, um, and, and they're <laughs> tired. That, that's a John Orford manicotti thing. They're tired of man. And so Moses is having not only a dialogue with God, but now he's having a dialogue with the people who are complaining, whining. We don't want any more manna. Can't we get something good to eat like we used to have in Egypt? Where we had McDonald's and Burger King, all those options. Um, and then man, uh, Moses just wants to die as he comes before the Lord and cries. Am I to carry all these children like in my bosom? I mean, I've been told this caring one's difficult. <laughs> How is that going as you've been called into this dialogue of ministry of mine? Difficult. <laughs> <laughs> and beautiful. And joyful and painful. The call to intercede, the call to be... Um, walk alongside you all as a future leader in rostered ministry is one that is all of those things. It's painful and beautiful and difficult and heart-wrenching and joyful. It's all of the things that Moses feels with the people that he's leading and the people feel as well as they follow. I get the complaints. I understand where they're coming from. I understand where Moses is coming from when he is like, God, what the heck? <laughs> I can't listen to them complain anymore. I can only do so much. But it's beautiful because it's community. And it's the reality of life and the reality of relationships. Being called to being a pastor to shepherd God's people is being called to intercede into the lives of every person that I meet, every person that we meet. It's being called to walk alongside you when you feel joys and when you feel pain, when you get great news and when you get horrible news and the passing of another sibling in Christ and in the welcoming of another sibling in Christ. It's painful beautiful. It's humbling. It's humbling for me because I know that I'm a human and I don't have all the answers. 
And sometimes I feel guilty for not having all the answers. Sometimes I feel like, as a pastor, I should be able to answer questions of why things are really difficult, why we have to keep eating manna over and over and over again. Why can't we go back to the land where there were melons and honey, even if we forget that that place was also painful and full of suffering? It's a humbling experience because I don't have the answers, but yet I'm still called by God, and we are still called by God to come together and to journey with each other. It is kind of like carrying a child. This is my first child, and it's been a beautiful experience, and it's been very painful. It's been taxing physically and mentally and emotionally, and I understand Moses a little bit more intensely now. To carry people, to carry the burdens, to carry the knowns and the unknowns of what lies ahead is daunting. And I'm just beginning. I'm not ordained yet. I've done pulpit supply, I've done internship, and I'm serving you as your student pastor, and I have so much more ministry to go. So much more joy and so much more pain and so many more people to intercede with and for people to intercede with me. That's what I go off of. I go off of how I have felt people intercede in my faith journey. My pastor is growing up, my parents, Pastor Mike, my professors, every person I've met along the way has interceded in my faith journey to an extent that has taught me how to help other people, how to walk into relationship and intercede in your lives. So I'm just starting, but you're not just starting. <laughs> You've had 30 years experience in interceding in people's lives and hearing the burden of the joys and pains of love and ministry. What does that feel like? What does that feel like? How do you keep going with the complaints of manna and more manna and more manna? Yeah. Mm. Never. Right. Right. I think about the dialogue that God made in the and then God continues to give us words of encouragement along the way. People are also in the community to continue to remind me that I'm not doing this alone. I have to say to you, my father, that I think about voting for the problem of justice. He said that Moses is going to be a good thing to do. He said that he was going to be a good thing to do. He said that he was going to be a good thing to do. He said that he was going to be a good thing to do.
Let us confess our faith in God through the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again, he ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last day. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Gracious God, we give you thanks that your spirit calls people into ministry across the world. That in your church, the word is proclaimed, the fellowship is strengthened, and the service is inspired by your gifts to those in need. O oh Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we give you thanks for your life that is ours in Christ that you grant to us. You have destroyed the power of sin, death in the grave, and opened us a way to eternal life. And so we pray for those who grieve that they may be comforted. We pray for the family of Gene Westman and for Don Carlson. Grant them your healing, O Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the community that is and around our church building, the languages that are spoken, the people from across the world who live here, the celebration of the diversity that is all around us. Guide us, O oh Lord, as we put away fear and hear your call into community to walk together. O oh Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we give you thanks for those who work and serve in medical facilities, nursing homes, hospitals, care, for, care facilities. We pray for those who need healing in body, mind, and spirit, especially for Eloise, Darlene, David, Phyllis, Alec, Rhonda, Jenny, Gary, Benny and Marie. All those who we name before you, a loud or silent or Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, we give you thanks for the new life that you are bringing into the world through Rachel. Be with Rachel in this delivery journey and guide them as they begin their new family. Grant her rest in her maternity time, maternity leave time. O oh Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray. We trust in your mercy through Jesus Christ our Lord. Peace of the Lord be with you all. 
Amen. Please share a sign of that peace with those of you around you and those of you at home. God's peace to you as we prepare for Holy Communion now. For the sky, for the autumn sky with its crisp chill breeze, for the wind, for the autumn wind blowing through the trees, for the leaves, for the colored leaves drifting gently to the Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. For the sun, for the golden sun and the gentle rain. For the sea, for the has grown to grow for the feast for the harvest feast we enjoy this time each year Lord we thank you Lord we thank you Lord we thank you for the beauty of the season the changing always a reminder you are ever more the same for the bounty of the harvest for the blessing you so freely give we thank you and we pray For your precious Son, who has set us free. For your gift of abundant life for eternity. For your love, for your boundless love and amazing saving grace. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank and see 
pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole community. Turn our hearts towards those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He is right to give our thanks and praise. You're welcome to have your communion ready as we gather now. And set, we'll celebrate communion after praying the Lord's Prayer. In the night which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and he gave thanks, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Let us pray the prayer of Jesus Christ. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. In the kingdom, power, and the glory of your angels. Now and forever. Please say to one another, the body of Christ broken for you. The body of Christ broken for you. Amen. The blood of Christ shed for you. The blood, the blood of Christ, Christ shed, shed for you. Amen.
not find a solace there. Now may the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Life-giving God, in the mystery of Christ's resurrection, you send light to conquer darkness, water to give new life, the bread of life to nourish your people. Send us forth as witnesses to your Son's resurrection, that we may show your glory to all the world, through Christ our risen Lord. Let us sing our sending song, Lord Jesus, you shall be my song. Right after the blessing. God Almighty, God most merciful, bless you keep you, and give you peace.